What is going on everybody, Estas here, welcome back to another video. So in today's video, we're going to be doing an overall market update, taking a look at the Dow Jones, the S&P 500, and the NASDAQ. We're also going to be doing a trading update, talking about what I personally did today in the markets, as well as a couple of stocks and ETFs, four in particular, that I'm watching and looking to trade here, heading into the month of October in 2019. So if you enjoy this video, if you find value in this video, feel free to go down below, hit that like like button and by the way guys I've been wanting to do this for a while let me know down below in the comment section what state are you from if you're in the US and what country if you're outside of the US are you watching this video from and if you guys want to be further connected with our community feel free to go down below join the strive smart discord group chat and join the strive smart Facebook group and all of the other social links they're linked down below in the description box and let's get right into it guys starting off with the S S&P 500, the SPX, the 500 largest publicly traded U.S. companies. At the time that I'm recording this video with about 14 minutes left in the market, this is currently up $4.41, up 0.15%. And if you guys watched my video yesterday and one of my videos or a couple of my videos from the past couple of videos, we've been talking about the channel that the S&P has been trading in, which is pretty much between 2990 and that all-time high at around 3020 to around 3027. And if we zoom in a bit here on the 20 day one hour, you guys can see we are holding the 2990 support, which is very critical. And if we were to break the support, hypothetically, the next support we may be going to is around 2950. So the fact that we are holding the support right now does give me hope that the S&P could potentially run up to that all time high level to potentially retest it and maybe even break out of it to hit another all time high, right? And this one level here, the 50 SMA on this hourly chart is what I'm watching closely as a resistance level. And if we zoom in a bit more, five day, five minute, you guys can see this is kind of a double bottom at that level of support at around 29.90. So watch how the market's going to close right here in terms of the SPX and watch whether or not tomorrow we end up gapping up and breaking out of this 180 SMA on the five day, five minute chart, because this is a resistance. And if we do break out of that, that's going to be pretty bullish in my opinion. And we may be making that run up to that level of 30.25, which again, is that all-time high for the S&P. But overall today, on the one day, one minute, it's been quite boring. You know, again, we're up $3 right now. You know, we kind of were in this wedge pattern in the beginning of the day, ended up breaking the top of the wedge, which was pretty bullish. And despite that, again, we're still up $3, but we are closing on a little upswing here, which does give me some bullish hope heading into the next trading session. Going down to the Dow Jones right now, guys, this one's down, or rather up, up $40 right now, up 0.15%. So in terms of a percent value, this one's doing a bit better than the S&P 500 today. And you can see it's very similar in terms of price action, right? We gap down, hit that level of support at around 26,900. And then from there, we broke out of moving average resistances, closing up on a nice little upswing or really not closing yet because we didn't actually close yet. But, you know, moving on that nice little upswing, you know, really at a, at the point of around 11 15 a.m about an hour and 45 minutes into the market here on the east coast is when we did start to break out on the dow and on the s p i'm pretty sure if we just double check yep right around that same time period so going back to the dow jones industrial average here guys on the 20 day one hour you can see that gap down today let us hold the 26 900 level which again is a major support if we zoom out and look on the 184 hour chart right i know there's a bunch of mumbo jumbo here try to ignore that you know, that's from my own technical analysis. All you really have to look at is this top channel, which again is between 26.9 and around 27,400, 27,300-ish, which is that level of the all-time high. So if we hold this here, guys, at the close, which it does seem like we will, you know, we may be going up tomorrow. This could be good for the bulls out there, but if we break this support level, if we zoom back into the five-day, five-minute, you can see we may be going back down 
down to retest 26.9. And if we break 26.9, that won't be too good in the short term. We may be going down to 26.6, which would put us right on top of those moving average support levels on this four hour chart, being this 50 and this 180 SMA. So going to the NASDAQ, guys, currently up around 23 points. It's doing the best in terms of, um, you know, the three major indexes on a percentage basis, up 23 points, like I said, up 0.3%. And one positive thing <clears throat> that I'm seeing here from the NASDAQ on a technical basis is that we are holding this overall trend that you guys see here. And honestly, let me just clear this whole drawing set because it's getting a bit sloppy here. If I just redraw this, you'll be able to see that it's holding this trend at a higher low from the previous, right? Which is a very good sign that it's trying to maintain the uptrend. And if we go out a bit, if we zoom out a bit on this four hour chart, let me get those resistance tools very quickly. It seems like we're looking to potentially close above this old resistance resistance at around 7850 as a new support. That's going to be very good for the bulls, right? Because if we do end up holding this into the close, maybe gapping up tomorrow morning in terms of the futures, this could be a sign that we may be filling the gap up to let's say 7900 and maybe back up to those highs at about 8050. So just keep an eye on this level on this channel from around 7850 to about let's say 7950 that 100 point win is where the NASDAQ is looking like it's trading right now. So that is what the overall technicals on the market are looking like right now and the performance of the stock market today with about 10 minutes left in the market on the 23rd of September in 2019. So let me know down below in the comment section again if you didn't do it before what state are you from what country are you from and let me know what are your thoughts on the stock market right now the NASDAQ the Dow, the S&P, where are the markets headed? I would love to know what you guys have to think. And let's get into the trading portion of today's video, the trading update of today's video, which I traded... CMG guys and if you guys watched my video yesterday this played out perfectly this isn't this was actually one of the stocks the top stocks that I was watching um, and I talked about for this upcoming week in my Sunday video and if you guys don't know every Sunday I talk about stocks and ETFs and kind of my plan for that upcoming week so subscribe to the channel if you do want to see those types of videos and what did I say in yesterday's video guys if we zoom into this 20 day one hour we were struggling to get above 835 as a resistance and I said that if we were to break 835, that would be very bullish. The move would happen very quick. But if we were to capitalize on that move, we'd be able to fill up whether it's to the half of this channel, which is where we're currently at, or maybe even to the top of the channel with a potential trade, right? And that's kind of what I capitalized on. I saw the breakout this morning. That gave me the bullish signal to potentially get in. And when I saw it aggressively moving in the morning, this was actually a point where I was like, okay, I'm hopping into this stock. This is doing exactly what I talked about in my Sunday, uh, really my just my Sunday update video. And I can't just miss out on this and I and I just hopped in guys if we zoom into the one day one minute you guys can see the aggressive breakout into the 835 level shattering that resistance and this is when I ended up getting in right once we started to aggressively run I got in at about 837 838 roughly here I did not sell at the peak here which would have given me about let's see if I just go back to this trend line tool very quickly to see how much of a percent that would have gave uh, given me that would have been roughly a 1%, 0.9.8% move. I didn't sell there. I held through the pain here on the little pullback, but it wasn't really pain because I was still up at that point. And then we started to run up. And then once we started to get to that point where we peaked the previous time, right, which was a resistance at that point in time at about 845, that's where I ended up selling at about a 0.8 to about like a 0.75% profit. So it's always great when you do your research on Sunday when you plan things out, right? When you do your technical analysis and it goes 100% to plan. This literally happened today um, with Chipotle Mexican Grill. And this is actually one of those two stocks, two hot stocks that I'm looking to trade heading into the month of October that I'm looking to trade right now. So now that I talked about what I did in terms of my trade, let me know what you guys did in terms of your trades. But let's get into the second portion of this video, or rather the third portion of this video, where I 
I talk about some stocks and ETFs that I'm personally watching. So Chipotle Mexican Grill is at the top of this list because of this bullish move. And let me explain why I'm saying that, right? We broke 835, which is giving us the go to potentially fill up to 856, right? It seems like we're doing that right now, but let's say we get a pull down, a pull down tomorrow, a pullback. This could be a great opportunity to get in before we do end up filling the gap up to 855. And the reason why this is a hot stock, in my opinion, is because if it breaks 855 at that point, it could get to the level where it hits all time highs again and ultimately continues the uptrend. And overall, guys, Chipotle has low key been one of the hottest stocks in the stock market from 441 in the beginning of 2019 all the way to where it is right now. That's nearly a double up in its price. That's a return of about 90 to 95 percent from this month of January or rather yeah, this month of January in 2019, up to where it is right now. So expect a potential pullback here, which it seems like if we look on the one day, one minute, we may already be getting into the close. That's a very good sign. So watch this in the morning. Are the futures really, maybe not the, the market futures, but are the pre-market uh, for this particular stock, is it gapping down pre-market? Is it kind of consolidating? Is it popping up? Which means, hey, it may be going to fill the gap even tomorrow, right? That's what you have to look at before potentially hopping into Chipotle Mexican Grill, and that's what I'm personally doing as well. If we zoom back out to the 20-day, you know, if we get down here, this could be a great opportunity for a potential 3% play up to those highs, and again, if we break out, go to all-time highs, maybe into the 860s, 870s, that could offer even more. So this is definitely a hot stock that I'm watching one of the two in this month of September to finish off. And the second one is going to be Apple. It's not as hot of a stock, but it has been doing quite well since the end of August. You guys can see on the 20 day one hour, it's gone from 200 all the way to 226, which is a price move or rather a percentage move of about 11% in the matter of a couple of weeks. And now it's kind of treading right down to a about 218, which gives it still about a 9-10% gain from that point in time where we bottomed out at, at 201. And the main time frame that I want to focus on here with Apple is going to be this four-hour time frame, right? We notice how we're trending in between a channel, and I talked about this in yesterday's video as well, between 215 to 226, right? That gives us, if we get in at 215 upwards to 226, that gives us about, <clears throat> excuse me, a five to six percent margin of profit if we were to buy at the bottom and sell at the, at the top in a perfect scenario, right? The fact that we are holding this level right here does give me hope that that could potentially happen tomorrow, which means, or in where, um, let me just clarify that. I mean that if we end up breaking out of this, <clears throat> tomorrow we may be able to get that buy signal or that might be the buy signal to potentially get into AAPL so we're seeing the double bottom here on Apple at about 215, 217, which again is that support. That's a good sign. But now we're in a wedge where are we going to pop out of the resistance of this wedge, which again would be that bullish thing that we want to see, that bullish sign, or are we going to break the support, which would not be good for a potential swing trade? That would be negative because we might be going to retest the 215 support, which if we break that, that's going to just crumble our trading thesis for this particular stock. So ideally, again, I want to see that breakout on the top of the wedge this could be a nice fill up to 228 and we did get a piece of good news about apple today which honestly it's probably not too big of a catalyst because the macbook pro um uh, segment of the business it's not too massive but if we look here on the live news you guys can see <clears throat> Apple will keep production of its new Mac Pro computer in Texas, reversing plans to move production to China after receiving tariff exemptions. So that's pretty good. You know, those products, they're not going to be, you know, tariff. There's not going to be any tariffs on them because they're being produced, um, you know, in the United States. So that's good news for Apple as a shareholder. But is that a catalyst, um, you know, for the stock right now? I don't think it is because it's not a massive segment of the business. 
business. But anyway, it's good news, and honestly, that's just what I'm looking for Apple right now. It's looking good, but the way it's closing right now, it's kind of looking a bit bearish with the sell-off here until the close but then again overall the trend is up for um the the intraday moves here so i'm watching apple there i'm watching chipotle mexican grill very closely i'm pulling up my phone right now to uh, talk about two other stocks that i want to watch here and talk to you guys about the next one being ulta so ulta it got crushed after a terrible earnings report you guys can see here from 368 back in the middle of july of 2018 it hit lows of 224 just two months later which is a loss of over 30 percent i believe right yes it is 30 to 38 percent loss that's insane right but now it seems like ulta has found a temporary bottom at 224 dollars this could be the bottom here right we're noticing strong support over the past couple of weeks if we go to the 20 day one hour you guys can see it and now we're breaking above moving averages on this hourly chart which is a good sign so this could be the start of the recovery phase for Ulta which is why I'm watching it this is one that again it's risky because of the earnings guidance all of that stuff but technicals don't lie and this could be the start of maybe a bit of a recovery up to 240 maybe 250 maybe 260 before it starts to fall again which of course if that does end up happening we can capitalize on that little move up before it does end up falling again if if that that is how it ends up playing out. And if we zoom out very quickly to the three-year, one-week chart, we notice that this is a very strong level of support for Ulta, right? Back in July of 2018, it held that level. Back in December of 2018, it held that level, right? After that massive crash that we saw in the market, Ulta crashed as well, and again, it held that level. That's very, very good. And it rose up to 368, the massive dump. And now we're starting to see some candlesticks here on this larger term time frame, which is very good. And this time frame is the three-year, one-week chart chart so just keep an eye here on Ulta guys this can definitely be a a uh honestly a recovery play and might as well just throw this into this video just for you all out there that like to like to trade stocks that have gotten killed right because another one is KHC which I, I haven't traded in a long time, but this is one that at some point it's going to be bound for a recovery, right? It's gotten crushed, $97 peak in 2017, now $24. You know, this one could reverse eventually and offer a lot of good gains for those that are patient enough for it, right? So the one last one that I want to talk about before I do end off this video is PayPal, ticker symbol PYPL. So PayPal right now, overall here, it's in this wedge, right? We've been talking about that and all the videos that I've been covering PayPal in, and it's looking to break out either to the upside or the downside at this point, right? Each trading day that passes, it's getting more and more squeezed into this wedge, and you can see it clearly from these technicals, right? We're making higher lows at the same time as we're making lower highs, which again is putting us in this wedge so it's like apple right are we going to break out of the top are we going to break out of moving average resistances which is going to be very bullish or are we going to break the support here break the higher lows which would be very bearish and at that point we may be going down to test maybe the the low 100s right maybe the high 90s these are a couple of levels that you know we could potentially be testing if we do end up dropping, you know, you can see, again, if we're just stretching it out a bit further uh, on the support level, if we're looking a couple months back, 105 was a strong level of support. It was also a strong level of resistance until we broke it and held it as a support. So this could be a point where we break out, guys, in a beautiful company like PayPal, a very well-ran company like PayPal. This one could run up to all-time highs again if the markets are healthy, if the markets continue to appreciate. You know, this could just be a short-term hiccup in terms of the technicals on PayPal, which is why I'm just waiting for that break because once that happens, I feel like it's 
it's going to appreciate maybe back into the one tens, maybe the one teens. That is honestly what I'm watching right now. So those are a couple of stocks, guys. Let me know down below in the comments what stocks are you watching, what stocks are you trading. So I'm going to wrap up the video here. If you did enjoy this video, if you did find value in this video, feel free to go down below, hit that like button, consider subscribing, and don't forget to join the Strive Smart Discord group chat and the Strive Smart Facebook group. All of those are linked down below. So I'll catch you all in the next video. Thanks again for watching. Peace out.